Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to exciting archaeology news. In 1974, laborers excavating a well near Xi'an, China, stumbled upon an extraordinary archaeological find. A life-sized clay warrior frozen in a stance of readiness for battle. This momentous discovery, now recognized as one of the most significant in the world, prompted the swift involvement of Chinese authorities. Prepare for a journey that defies expectations, challenges the familiar, and uncovers a world nearly lost to time. Embark on this odyssey with us as we unravel the astounding revelations of the Xi'an Terracotta Army Site. A revelation so startling, it defies belief. Stay engaged as the past is on the verge of vivid resurrection in ways beyond your wildest imagination. Government archaeologists were promptly dispatched to the site to investigate and unearth the compelling remnants of ancient history upon notification. In the depths of excavation, not one, but a multitude of clay soldiers emerged, each bearing distinctive facial expressions and meticulously arranged based on their rank. Though their hues have faded over time, remnants of paint offer glimpses into the once vibrant colors adorning their clothing. Further discoveries within the site unveiled an array of weaponry, including swords and arrow tips, remarkably preserved in their original state. In the intricate tableau of the Terracotta Army, the stature of each figure is indicative of its rank, with generals towering as the tallest. These encompass a diverse array of soldiers, chariots, and horses meticulously arranged in three pits. As of 2007, estimates suggest that these pits house a formidable assembly of over 8,000 soldiers, 130 chariots, accompanied by 520 horses, and an additional 150 cavalry horses. Remarkably, the majority of this assembly still maintains its original placement within the pits, adjacent to the mausoleum of Qin Shi Huang. Beyond the martial splendor, supplementary pits reveal an intriguing array of non-military terracotta figures. This eclectic assortment includes depictions of officials, acrobats, strongmen, and musicians, providing a multifaceted glimpse into the rich tapestry of Qin Shi Huang's envisioned afterlife. The meticulous arrangement of these figures, each with its own significance, offers a poignant narrative of the cultural and symbolic depth embedded within the Terracotta Army's silent testimony. The Terracotta Army serves as a solemn portrayal of the military forces under the command of Qin Shi Huang, China's inaugural emperor. Crafted as a poignant form of funerary art, these sculptures were interred alongside the emperor in 210 to 209 BCE, meticulously designed with the explicit intent of safeguarding him in the realm beyond. In 246 BC, a 13-year-old Ying Zheng ascended to the throne, marking the beginning of a transformative era. By 221 BC, he had successfully united disparate kingdoms, earning the title Qin Shi Huang Di, the first emperor of Qin. As documented by the court historian Siam Qian of the Han Dynasty, the construction of Qin's mausoleum was initiated shortly after his ascension to the throne. Over 700,000 laborers were involved in this colossal undertaking, abruptly halted in 209 BC due to uprisings emerging a year following Qin's demise. Presently, four pits have undergone partial excavation. Three house the remarkable assembly of terracotta soldiers, horse-drawn chariots, and weaponry, while the fourth pit stands as a poignant testament to the project's unfinished state. In the monumental undertaking chronicled by historian Sima Qian in the records of the Grand Historian dating back to 246 BCE, the construction of Emperor Qin's tomb stands as a testament to China's grandeur. A mere 13 years old at the commencement of the project, Emperor Qin marshaled 700,000 conscripted workers to bring his mausoleum to fruition. The choice for Mount Li for the tomb, as documented by geographer Li Dai Huang six centuries later in Xu Xing Zhu, was a strategic one. Mount Li's auspicious geology, renowned for its jade mines and abundant gold on the northern slope, coupled with the allure of beautiful jade on the southern slope, made it a fitting resting place for the ambitious emperor. This selection, underscored by Mount Li's esteemed reputation, forms a crucial backdrop to the monumental venture that unfolded in the historical narrative. Furthermore, the first emperor's burial is depicted as a grand spectacle, featuring palaces, towers, officials, and an array of precious artifacts. 
Notably, the narrative unveils a mesmerizing scene of 100 simulated rivers crafted with mercury, adorned by celestial bodies on the ceiling, and complemented by the intricate depiction of the landscape below. While some translations mention models or imitations, these terms are absent in the original text, which intriguingly omits any reference to the famous Terracotta Army. The presence of elevated mercury levels in the tomb mound soil lends credence to Sima Qian's detailed description. Beyond this, historical records highlight the first emperor's pension for erecting colossal statues in human form, exemplified by the twelve metal colossi from his reign. Subsequent historical narratives propose that Shang Yu, a contender for the throne, may have looted the complex and the tomb itself, following the first emperor's demise. However, there are subtle indications challenging the notion of widespread plundering, suggesting that the tomb may have remained largely untouched. The figures, renowned for their distinctive realism and individuality since their unearthing, have captivated scholars with their unique features, ensuring that no two are alike. Art historian Hermann Hoffner, in 1986, first proposed a potential Hellenistic connection to these sculptures, attributing their extraordinary naturalism to Western influence, particularly Alexander the Great's era. Director Duan Xingbo and Professor Lucas Nichols supported this notion, drawing parallels between the Terracotta Army and Central Asian Calcheon Statuary. Senior archaeologist Li Zhuzhen acknowledged Western inspiration, but staunchly asserted Chinese authorship. While recognizing Greek influence, Li Zhuzhen emphasized the distinctiveness of the Terracotta Army as a product of Chinese craftsmanship. The absence of Greek names on the warriors further supports her argument, refuting the idea of Greek artisans training local sculptors. Critics challenge such theories, branding them as outdated and Eurocentric, perpetuating the notion that non-Western civilizations lacked artistic sophistication. Dartmouth College's Daryl Wilkinson counters by pointing to the Qian era naturalism and drawing parallels with the pre-Columbian Moche culture in Peru, suggesting that naturalism wasn't exclusively a Greek invention. Independent researcher Raoul McLaughlin dismisses Greek influence on the Terracotta Army, highlighting disparities in craftsmanship, materials, and symbolism. In exploring these perspectives, the debate surrounding the cultural origins of the Terracotta Army continues to unfold. In 2007, a significant breakthrough emerged from Stanford University and the Advanced Light Source Facility in Berkeley, California. Researchers utilized powder diffraction experiments, energy dispersive X-ray, spectroscopy, and micro X-ray fluorescence analysis to delve into the origins of terracotta figures adorned with Chinese purple dye. These findings revealed a fascinating connection to the expertise cultivated by Taoist alchemists. Their pursuit of synthesizing jade ornaments inadvertently influenced the process of crafting these vivid artifacts, with the key component being barium copper silicate. This scientific revelation provided a profound glimpse into the interplay between ancient alchemical knowledge and the vibrant hues of terracotta artistry. Since 2006, a global team of scholars from the UCL Institute of Archaeology has delved into the secrets of the Terracotta Army's creation, employing cutting-edge analytical chemistry techniques. Through X-ray fluorescent spectrometry, they meticulously examined 40,000 bronze arrowheads, organized in bundles of 100. Within each bundle, these arrowheads displayed a distinct cohesion, forming tight clusters that set them apart from other groupings. Remarkably, the presence or absence of metal impurities remained consistently unique to each bundle. Drawing parallels with a contemporary manufacturing system, the researchers likened this intricate process to the cellular approach employed by modern Toyota factories, as opposed to the assembly line method of early automobile manufacturing. This innovative revelation sheds light on the meticulous craftsmanship involved in crafting the Terracotta Army. Moreover, when scrutinized under a scanning electron microscope, the arrowheads revealed intriguing details, grinding and polishing marks. These marks offer tangible evidence of early industrial lathe usage for polishing, providing a glimpse into the advanced techniques employed in the creation of this awe-inspiring ancient marvel. 
In 1982, the captivating tale of China's terracotta army took its first steps beyond the borders of its homeland, unfolding its ancient secrets at the National Gallery of Victoria in Melbourne. Fast forward to a pivotal moment in 2007, the British Museum in London played host to a remarkable exhibition titled The First Emperor, China's Terracotta Army. This showcase, featuring 120 artifacts from the mausoleum and a dozen terracotta warriors, marked a cultural milestone. From September 13, 2007 to April 2008, it held the spotlight, turning the British Museum into the United Kingdom's premier cultural attraction. The exhibition's impact was profound, propelling 2008 into the annals of the British Museum's most triumphant years drawing crowds reminiscent of the iconic King Tutankhamun exhibition in 1972. The Terracotta Army exhibition became a spectacle of unparalleled allure. An astonishing 400,000 advance tickets sold out with such fervor that the museum extended its hours into midnight, a testament to the magnetic allure of these ancient wonders. Amidst the fervor, reports emerged of gates shutting and an unprecedented crush during Chinese New Year events, echoing the intense fascination that this collection held. It was a phenomenon unparalleled, often likened only to the draw of the RMS Titanic artifacts. In the narrative of historical relics, the Terracotta Army stands alone, capable of beckoning a crowd simply with the weight of its name. This captivating exhibition embarked on a transcontinental journey, enchanting audiences across North America. Museums like the Asian Art Museum of San Francisco, the Bowers Museum in Santa Ana, California, the Houston Museum of Natural Science, and the High Museum of Art in Atlanta opened their doors to showcase this remarkable collection. The National Geographic Society Museum in Washington, D.C., and the Royal Ontario Museum in Toronto also bore witness to this cultural spectacle. Venturing beyond the borders of North America, the exhibition found itself in Sweden at the Museum of Far Eastern Antiquities, leaving an indelible mark from August 28, 2010 to January 20, 2011. In Australia, the first emperor, China's entombed warriors, graced the art gallery of New South Wales, revealing 120 artifacts from December 2, 2010 to March 13, 2011. Meanwhile, the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts hosted an exhibition entitled La Empereur Guerriere de China et son Armée de Terra Quit, translated to the Warrior Emperor of China and his Terracotta Army from February 11, 2011 to June 26, 2011. Italy, too, succumbed to the allure of this ancient marvel, with Turin's Museum of Antiquities displaying five terracotta warriors from July to November 2008. In Milan, the royal palace hosted the exhibition The Two Empires from April to September 2010, unveiling nine statues, including officials, lancers, and an archer. The Historical Museum of Bern, Switzerland, embraced this historical odyssey, featuring soldiers and related artifacts from March 15th to November 17th, 2013. The Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City witnessed an immersive experience titled Age of Empires, Chinese Art of the Qian and Han Dynasties, from April 3rd to July 16, 2017, showcasing terracotta army figures among a plethora of treasures. Across the Pacific, the Pacific Science Center in Seattle, Washington, displayed terracotta warriors of the First Empire from April 8 to September 4, 2017, before the exhibition traveled to the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, lasting from September 30, 2017 to March 4, 2018, complete with augmented reality. The World Museum in Liverpool, United Kingdom, warmly welcomed an exhibition entitled China's First Emperor and the Terracotta Warriors from February 9th to October 28th, 2018, ensuring that the legacy continued to captivate audiences globally. Germany also experienced the grandeur of this ancient spectacle through a tour of 120 real-size replicas of terracotta statues. Frankfurt am Main, Munich, Oberhof, Berlin, at the Palace of the Republic, and Nuremberg were among the German cities touched by this cultural journey between 2003 and 2004.
And there we conclude our expedition into the riveting archaeological discoveries at the Xi'an Terracotta Army Site. An extraordinary journey through the remnants of an ancient civilization unfolds before us, leaving an indelible mark on our understanding of history. As we reflect on these remarkable finds, a tale of mystery, craftsmanship, and the enduring legacy of a lost era takes place. Don't miss out on future explorations into the wonders of archaeology. Hit the subscribe button, and if you found this journey through the Xi'an Terracotta Army site as captivating as we did, give us a thumbs up. Thank you for being a part of this archaeological journey with us. Until next time, keep exploring and discovering the mysteries that lie beneath the layers of time.